military history and some of that. And I, when I went out to the firing range, and I, Last night was the most afraid I've ever been, to actually hear the planes and hear the bombs and hear the reports that people are, are dying. Um, then the reality really hit that, well, you know, here we are in the middle of two armies and, uh, yeah, I was, I was starting to feel that I really was. There you go. out in front of the United Nations by the Iraq peace team is actually about supporting the, the UN process now. And already we're seeing a lot of pressure mounted by the United States to discredit that whole process. I believe that the ordinary person has to make a, uh, a stand against war. Political leaders wage war, but ordinary people should never sever the ties that bind them to, uh, to each other. And uh, that's why some of us have decided to stay in Iraq, even if the uh, war occurs. I think it's important for me as an American to communicate to them that they're not my enemy and that uh, we are kind of one humanity. So what's required? The full and unfettered weapons inspection. But let that process go forward unhindered with the aim that at the end of the tunnel, there's a lifting of the economic sanctions, which I'll be very glad to say have been a weapon of mass destruction. I've seen that destruction here. Never ever aim your gun at something you don't want to, want to kill, and certainly you never aim your gun at a human being. And so I had all that kind of teaching. Yeah. 
ها مو بعيد بعد شو هي طمع سادة؟ يلا 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 ست أميرة أميرة هاي هاي Here's an example of the type of thing that was uh, thrown about during the war, and it's not—it's not just uh, small quantities. Thirty-five tons of uh, depleted uranium was spread around this area uh, during the war. We've been told not to touch anything here, um, and I'm glad it's not a windy day, so there's no dust. But I'd say if you walked around here with a Geiger counter, it would go crazy. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of nuclear fission. It's still got uh, uranium-235 in it. When it impacts, 40% uh, of it is vaporized. Uh, carcinogenic particles then go into the dust and uh, into the air uh, and into the, uh, the water table. She suffered from leukemia. Leukemia means the cancer of blood. And the main cause of leukemia here, the, and the cause of an increasing cases of leukemia in this country in these years, the effect of depleted uranium. We didn't see this, this cases before the war, for mm -hmm. but out after the war, there were many, many cases of leukemias. Well, this isn't the only hospital I've been to. I've been to quite a few lately, and... Uh, the more I see of it, the more I'm convinced that there is a causal link between the depleted uranium and the, uh, the birth defects that we've been seeing. It, it can't be proved, but the numbers are consistently coming up all the time. There would be an outcry if that happened to our kids back home. It's happening to the kids here, and nobody seems to give a damn. <laughs> So David, what are these? Where did they, yeah. they come from? A uh, one? Yes. Uh, yeah. They came from a uh, uh, the store in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, yeah. Yeah. They're all yeah. over the counter medications. Yeah. 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 Who are you giving I to? Don't know. We were given to the, uh, the clinic of the, the Chaldean Church here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the bishop. And, yeah, uh, the we're just hoping yeah. that they can yeah. use the medication. So. Mm -hmm. And I want to say thank you and God bless you. And very, very, uh, we, we are very happy that you are sharing us with our thank suffering. You. Thank you. It's very little. Yeah. It's very well, little. It's not for very no. Dr. Helfiker runs the risk of a $10,000 fine back in the U.S. for bringing in these medicines in defiance of the UN blockade. That hasn't stopped Kathy Kelly. She's been bringing in medicines since 1996. We break the law. We break the US law as an act of nonviolent resistance and 
before that were threatened with 12 years in prison, a $1 million fine, a $250,000 administrative penalty. And um, in fact, I was just fined $10,000, I guess, about four weeks ago, and the organization another $10,000. But we won't pay those penalties. We'll instead direct the money into paying for what we do believe in, which is our right to practice the works of mercy and not the works of war. <laughs> Many of the water plants were hit by bombing and also the uh, electrical grid was taken out so that the water plants no longer operated. And the tragedy of the sanctions has been is they haven't been able to be repaired. So they are simply sucking water out of the river and they are pumping it out without any chlorination and the net effect is that waterborne diseases are being distributed throughout the, the whole of the community. And waterborne diseases with young children become very serious. We can throw off the effects of diarrhoea, but a young child uh, has no such chance. Now what crime did those children commit? And why should their deaths be utterly neglected by the world community while we fixate almost as though it's an obsessive compulsive disorder on whether or not Iraq could pose a threat to any of its neighboring states which have been loaded up with weapons, many of them from the United States, or whether or not Iraq might pose a threat to U.S. ability to control Iraq's oil. Islamic Sufi Sheikh to visit his mosque and experience their sacred ritual. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. دعمتها القوى المادية هاي القوى الروحية هذا يعني فعل ليس من صنيع الإنسان هذه هذا فعل إلهي They don't want just peace. 
ولا يحبون الحرب يتمنون أن, أن لا تقع الحرب ويدعون الله أن لا تقع We're on our way now to a, a family that lost three members when a, a, a bomb, so-called smart bomb, landed directly on their house and killed three people. Houses were destroyed. موهي <تصفيق> 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 يعني ما أعتقد هم الأمريكان يخطون فهم احتمال يعني متعمدين على هيك شيء يسوون في البلبل بالبلد أو that we often hear these days is we have no quarrel with the Iraqi people, only their leader. So that's the rhetoric of war. Uh, President Reagan used it when he bombed Libya. Bush Sr. used it when he bombed Iraq. And the problem with it is that when the smoke clears, it's not the leader who is buried, it's the ordinary innocent men, women and children. <laughs> 